Can the happiest person shout hallelujah? Right where you are, I don't want you to forget the matter, the plan of the enemy. No weapon. Sharpen against you shall prosper. This night, it is my heart desire that you will understand the contextual and the conceptual and the content and intent of the Bible passage I'm about to share with you. God is opposed to a believer being hopelessly poor. Jesus came to destroy the cross that sin brings to man. And I'm going to ask you to please allow God to interpret the Bible passage to you. If what I can say will change your thought pattern, if I can change the way you think, I will change the way you talk. If I change the way you talk, I will change the person you are. We are going to your family. God wants you to be the treasurer of your family. Now I'm going to shock you. God does not bless you for your sake. God blesses you that you may be a blessing to other people. Uh, it's a record in this fellowship that was the time I was paying school fees for how many people? 100 people. That came to 75 million in every five years. Where, where I come from, I have tied six of the streets without asking anybody for financial help. Where I come from, I have built about four hospitals. And my eye hospital is about the best in that part of the world. This night, we are looking for those who want to expand the gospel. Those who want to invest in the work of the Lord. Those who want to carry this gospel to every part of the world. That's why Jesus came to destroy poverty that you may help to expand the kingdom of God. And I was crying because when I asked God how many people are locked up in the hole of poverty, God said to me, eight. And I asked, why eight? Because I want that yoke broken and I want you to, uh, to, to expand I want you to be a blessing to members of your family who are not from the same father or mother with you. I want you to be a blessing to your distant relations. When I quarrel with my uncle over being a preacher, he sent me out of the house. But an uncle of mine said, no. Nobody can stop you from going to school while I'm alive. I'll pay your school fees. And I promised myself that I shall build a hospital after his name. And I'll train all his children. Six of them are now university graduates on account of my effort to fulfill that promise. Once you are a believer, God wants you to reach out to other people. God wants you to carry the gospel. The, when God, in 1985, when God told me, Oma, leave Uyo, go to Lagos, spend six months in Lagos, plan how to put together what we now call PFM. 
It sounded bogus because the amount of money he wanted me to use was so much. I thought it was not possible, but I was shocked. The first night we had dinner with the elders of Lagos, and I announced the budget of the program. One of them got up and said, oh man, this is not who you, where everybody gives you money. This is Lagos. We are poor people. You can't get such money. You have Pentecostal brothers. They only know how to speak grammar. They don't have money. He said, I have 20,000 to give on behalf of Baptist Church by church. A man got up and said, my friend, before you insult the Pentecostals, look at their shoes first and compare their shoes with their own. Look at their wristwatches. Don't just get up and insult us. You get 20,000. I came with 150,000 as my first installment out of 10. <laughs> How many of you are tired of being poor? No, tired of being limited? No, raise your hand. Let me see. Because. I'm asking God, I'm asking God to arise and scatter whatever is limiting you and do what no other person in your family had done. Are you on my side? Uh, before we, before we take your seat, before I preach, we had promised to give one of our daughters, one of the choristers, scholarship to do a university degree program. Um, Chioma, is she here? Come and get the girl out for us uh, to collect her school fees. <laughs> Chioma, what is Chioma? Madam. I am no more part of this ministry. What is your man? You're acting like you didn't. Uh, if she's of age, we need to help her. What is the student? The girl will promise scholarship. How much is the money? What is her school fees? Take it easy. Don't, don't be in a hurry. How much do they ask you to pay? I won't tell her to go home tonight with the school fees. Why can't it happen? Will they spend one year to process her documents? She should be on her way to the school. Come and give her 100,000 to hold. If it is more, we'll give you more. Come and open. You know, Pastor Joe, come and hope, open this uh, bag and bring out 100,000. Huh? I want you to know that God loves you. And as you go to school, be an avid reader. Love God. Serve God. Obey God. And he will take care of you. Eh? What is your mother? She didn't come today. Come. come okay. You didn't come the money. 100,000. Okay, that's your that's the deposit. Hold this woman. She will uh, help you know the exact amount of money they want for your school fees. Uh, what is uh, Mrs. Okora for? We're interested in the scholarship you mentioned. 
I would like to hear that one of, of our own daughters here uh, did her, her PhD program in U.S. You said the cost is what? $5 million. Uh, I'm going to set up a committee now with uh, Chioma and you as members of that committee. One of our own daughters must win the scholarship. <laughs> huh? uh, if they want money, I will, help, I will help bring the money. But whatever your daughter is schooling, we want our own daughter to school there. It could be any girl who loves God and any girl that God will choose. What is good for who? Is good for the, okay. Uh, they know me in America. They know I, on our way back from America with our son, they said the woman stole an American son. He will not return with that son. Uh, all they did not know was this man being here is not for nothing. So I called our ambassador and told him, if I don't go back with this child, I will set America on fire. He said, oh man, they are stubborn as you. I know you. Reverend, I know you. They are, they are stubborn as you. Don't fight them. They will take that child. Hey, stop. He said, no, you will stop, oh man. I will give you money now to go and buy a ticket and fly to New York and get the visa and the passport of this boy. And nobody will stop you from taking him home. See what wisdom can do. I will come up with the boy. Because I read, uh, but the funny thing was, they had sent messages across the globe announcing that Uma, a Nigerian, stole an American boy. is about to go with him. Will not allow him to run away with the American boy. Uh, they, they forgot I know what they know. <laughs> come, you can go back to your seats. No, come, to give your credential to Chioma. That is, tell her, your, you have telephone number, give her the telephone number, give her the address where you live, and let her know how much it will take for you to start school as quickly as possible. And tell the school, I said, they're delaying your time. They should allow you to start school. Tell them I said so. Huh? No, eh, eh, everywhere you see a madman, there's another madman there. They can't keep her waiting for over nothing. Tell us, school, tell them, I said, school has started. They should open that school for you to start studying. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Okay. You can go. God bless you. Can we give the Lord a good clap of faith? <laughs> Already I have seen one of us giving a testimony in America how he left here to study there. Because whatever is good for Americans is also good for us Nigerians. And we are the biggest people in Africa. Is that correct? And we are the to the Chris. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's, uh, I want you to bring out your notebook, bring out your textbook, bring out your Bible. I want to show you that God is waiting for you to know what you want out of life. If anybody had prospered under the sun, you are next in line to prosper. You know, stand up and say to one person only, if anybody had prospered around you, 
You're next in line to prosper. We applied somebody to work for us here. And she came preaching against what we preach. She, she said, we don't believe in prosperity. We are ready to suffer through life. And I called her and said, sorry, you are not qualified to walk in this place. Bye-bye. Because it's not biblical. Come, somebody read word one number. The book of Psalms, chapter 35, let's see verse 27. Please write it down. Everybody write it down. Let them shout, Let them for, shout joy for joy and be glad. And be glad. That favor my righteous cause. God's righteous cause that you may prosper. And by my spoken word tonight, you will prosper. Let them say continually. Let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Let the Lord be magnified. Which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Can you raise up your hand and say, God had pleasure in my prosperity? No, no, no. I want you to say it well. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you believe it. Say it like you are respecting it. Say it like you should have it. Yes, I read. Let them shout. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually. Let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Can someone say, Let the Lord be magnified? Who has pleasure in the prosperity, in the of, prosperity of the servant? That is, God has pleasure in your prosperity. Can you tell your neighbor, God has pleasure in my prosperity. Come, what does that mean? If God has pleasure in your prosperity, he will be interested in your prosperity. He will make it possible. And that possibility starts this night. My cousin was living in Gabon. He married a smashingly gorgeously mesmerizing a pretty girl. One day he sacked my cousin and said to him, I am too beautiful for a poor man like you. Go and find your class. And he sacked my cousin. My cousin called me from Gabon and told me the story of that disgrace that he was sent packing out of his own house because of his poverty. I told him, I preach a God of prosperity. I'm going to pray for you now. By my spoken word, you will be one of the greatest in our family. Right where you are sitting tonight, I don't care what your enemies will say. You will be one of the greatest in your family. Yeah. No, stand up and tell four people, I shall be one of the greatest in my family. The only reason why God brought you here is that you may live a prospered life. You will not be the poorest. You will be, what did I say you will be? No, you will be the treasurer of your family. 
Huh? They will not take action on anything until you have spoken. <laughs> have you written it down? When it comes to prosperity, it is not just about what you do. There is the covenant you have with God that promises you favor. You also have what we call God factor. I have been preaching for close to 80 years. I am amazed up till today, God still send people from different parts of the world to say, give money to man. There is no money in the banks in Uyo. Go and give him money. Pastor Joe, you are my witness about the one from where? Cameroon. Said God asked him to bring me five million. That's not small money. That's a lot of money. And then a couple called me from Ghana. They said they watched me preach sitting. And the wife began to cry and say, oh, this man has overworked himself. He has overlabored himself. And said to her husband, I want to give him my only three million I have. And the husband said, I'll add seven to make it ten. Come. You're not clapping like you're happy. All of us here, we have a covenant with God. I want you to know about that covenant. Uh, a covenant is a generational promise by God to prosper you if you will accept Christ. And not only to prosper and to protect. I want you to bring it to pen and write that God has promised to prosper and to protect and to set you apart from the rest members of your family. How many of you are happy to hear that God has set you aside for prosperity, for protection, for provision among members of your family? Therefore, I will not allow you to be the last in that family. How many of you like to lead in that family? Can, can you raise up your hand and uh, prophesy over yourself and say, I, I shall be one of the leaders of my family. <laughs> David struck a covenant with Jonathan and that gave him he gave out his robe, his sword, his girdle, and after Jonathan died, that covenant was still powerful. Right where you are. Jesus came that the power of sin may be destroyed around every believer. When we speak of the consequences of sin, we are talking about what sin can do to a man. It makes you poor. And this night, no poor man can evangelize. No poor man can take the gospel to another country. That's what wealth is all about. That you may evangelize the world. And I want you to hear me. You are no longer into small boy business. 
you are now into big man business. When God asked me to go to a, a Lagos and start PFL, he asked me to go with 5,000 for the choir. That's a lot of money. <laughs> when I announced it to the elders of, of Lagos, they said, oh man, you're a mad man. Your budget is not possible. Nobody can realize it. Not even out of Lagos. Forget about this, your, your plan. And I said, no, God told me before the end of this, our first dinner, the money shall be ready. My friend said to me, Uma, if I didn't know you, I'll call you a native doctor. Hey, come. Who is more powerful, a man of God or a native doctor? <laughs> Why, right where you are, Jesus came that he may make you an international preacher of the gospel. Amen. That takes a lot of money, but he'll provide it. The man that spoke to this, my friend, was a man from my home. And he said to this one, before you insult Pentecostal brothers, first look at their shoes and they watch their wearing. Said to him, you came with 20,000, I came with 150,000 as my first installment out of 10 installments. That was a knockout. Right where you are this night. God has a plan to bring you to a good international platform. God wants you to help evangelize the world. And only people with good money. Let's say the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 13 through 14. Please write it down. To write down what you hear is to remember what you heard. To remember what you heard is to be a man of the word. Yes, sir, read. What Christ, does it say? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from poverty. That's the meaning. He made a cross for us. He was made a cross for us. For it is written. It is written. Cause is everyone that hangs on a tree. Cause is everyone that hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That the Christ. blessings of Abraham might come, might come upon the Gentiles. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. That we might receive we're, the we're promise. We are here that the blessings of God might come upon you. We are not here to worry about our little mistakes. No. We are here that the blessings of God might come upon you. Amen. That's why Jesus came. And by my spoken word tonight, the blessings of Jesus shall come upon you. Amen. Read on, sir. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Yes. Go on. That's the end, sir. No, no, no. Galatians 3, 3 13, and 14. 13 through 14. Yes, sir. He said it is written, Cause is everyone that hung it on, on, on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham might, might come, come upon on the, Gentiles the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That is, the promise of God will come upon us. We the Gentiles. And when that happens, we will have no business with poverty, with lack, with struggling, with begging. And that miracle is a covenant promise from God. And that miracle 
is promised every believer. Read on, sir. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Yes, go on. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Don't be but a man's covenant. No, let, let's go to chapter, chapter 28 and we we'll read verse 1 and 2. Please open your Bible and read. I want you to write it down. I want you to hide it in your heart. We're not for this poverty stricken life. We want that which God had in mind when he brought us into this covenant. Read on, sir. 28 of the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2. Yes, read. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If thou shalt obey God. To observe. If thou shalt observe whatever this God will command you. And to do all his commandments. And to do all his commandments. Which I command thee this which day. Which I command you this day. That the Lord thy God will that set the Lord thee thy on God high. Will say the, right where you are tonight. You are candidates of those that God shall set on high. Yeah. Above all nations. Of Above earth. all nations. In your family you are going to be number one. I don't care what your enemies say. They are free to make noise. But the execution of God's promise is with God. And this God is ready to make you somebody. It starts this night. Read on, sir. And all these blessings shall come on thee. How many of you want all the blessings of God to come upon you? Can you prophesy it over yourself and say, all the promises of God shall come upon me. Go on, sir. And overtake thee. Can you imagine your blessings overtaking you? That is, there will be no space to park your car in your house. <laughs> If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of All the Lord All that God wants is that you hearken unto the voice of the Lord you are God. Just obey him. If God says, don't, if God says, love your wife, love her. Even when she hard on you, love her. Even when she says you are an idiot, don't get angry. Tell him I said, God also created so many idiots. And that she may be one of those idiots. Yes. If your wife said you are nobody, tell her you are somebody. Only she is not observant. We are called to love the woman God gave us to marry. Loving her means take care of her. Don't wait for her to beg you for money. Give her before she ask you. And help her to change, to be the best dressed person in the fellowship. I want your wife to be the best dressed woman in this fellowship. Come, do I have any woman who would like to be the best dressed fellowship? I mean, the, the best dressed member of our fellowship. Anybody here? Let me see you raise up your hand. Don't be afraid, for God will do it for you. Are you still here? I want you beginning today. Nobody is good enough to be your enemy. <laughs> I said to one of my friends, you, you, are, you are not big enough to be my enemy, so I, I, can't, I can't allow. I, I bought the written plan for my village and gave him four poles out of that effort to install the plants. He, he called me and said, oh, my, why would you give me four poles? We're enemies. And I said, my brother, measure your height again. 
It's not good enough for me to be your enemy. He asked, what did you say? I said, you are not big enough to be my enemy. So you cannot be my enemy. He asked me if I give you food, will you eat? Why not? This God has promised us that any food we eat with poison in it shall not harm us. So I went with him to his house. He brought the food. And I said, Father, sanctify this food. Make it holy. It shall not harm, but bless. In Jesus' name. And sat down and ate and ate until the garden was finished. On my way out, he pulled me back and asked me, you mean you ate that food? I said, yes. What if you die? No, Oga, this type of food cannot kill people like me. Come, have I died? Right where you are, you are not an ordinary person. I don't care how many people are plotting against you. Every stone the enemy shall throw at you will become your own stepping stone to greatness. No weapon sharpen against you shall prosper. God said it with a touch of finality and a hint of conclusion and a measure of authority and nobody can change it. We are called not for the little business of one family, but to be part of the world evangelization. We are going to carry the gospel. We'll be among the elite. Let's go back to chapter 28. Yes, sir. So let's say verse 1 through verse 3. What does it say? He it sh- and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the have voice of the Lord. Who are ready to hearken diligently and obey the word of God and obey him totally and completely and implicitly and do whatever God will ask them to do, that they may prosper according to the plan of God for your life. Anybody here? Let me see your hand raised up. If you are in support. Wow. Read on, sir. To observe and to do all to his commandments. To observe and to do all that he will command you to do. Which I command thee this day. Which I command you this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Above you call, all nations. Wait, wait, wait. Do I have anybody who will like God to set him on high? Are you sure? Wow. <laughs> what an awesome God. If you if you believe he will set you on high, raise up your hand and say, I am one of those that God shall set on high. <laughs> say it again, he will set me on high. Come, you are no longer going to do small boy business. <laughs> when, when, when I began to build my first house, my father-in-law saw the plan. He said, Roma, would you ever think small? This, this plan is too big for your age. And I said, sir, something is wrong here. I am not standing alone. I am standing with the maker of heaven and earth. He will help me complete this building. As believers, we don't walk out alone. This God follows us. He uses a torch to point the way for us. He gives us information. He helps us to complete what he has asked us to do. Therefore, you and the treasurer of your family. No, use your mouth and decree it and declare it. No, stand up and say it to four people. Four people. 
poor people. Because we didn't complete that line. I want her to repeat it because the Bible says here that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Will set you on high. Above all nations of Above the earth. all members of your family. Wow. Do you like it? <laughs> awesome God. Read on, sir. And all these blessings shall come all on thee. All these blessings shall come on thee. Come up, come on thee. And overtake thee. And overtake thee. How many of you are expecting blessings from God during this miracle convention? And this Christmas will be your best Christmas ever. No, you are going to have surplus supplies of God blessings upon your life. You will not borrow money from anybody. You will not beg anybody for money. The God I preach. Okay, I didn't finish my story. My uncle, I mean, my cousin, the wife sacked him. Say you are too poor. He said, he said, look, when soldiers see me because of my beauty, they will pack their car, hug me, and give me money. But you, stupid man, go and find another person, an ugly girl to marry, not me. And he said, my brother, I told him I'll pray for you. The God that preach will change the story of your life. Right where you're sitting tonight, while discussing this topic because God has a plan to change the story of your life. And it shall be changed. It shall be changed. It shall be changed. The next morning, he was driving his Vespa with a lot of fittings. The president of Gabon drove past him, stopped the car, came back and asked him, Hey, my friend, who are you? He said, I'm a Nigerian. I didn't go to school, but I am very, very intelligent. And the man said to him, from my hand forth, you will be leading my convoy. You will lead and will follow you. There is, God promised us, I said, I'll give you what favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Shall, shall come to right where you are sitting tonight, you are a candidate of favor. This God will fight your battles for you. Go, this God will speak to people in their heart on your behalf. Come. Something impossible happened. My brother escorted the president only for two months and bought two cars. Called me and said, no man, I don't know what to have in your mouth. That your short prayer had changed the story of my life. Right where you're sitting tonight, the story of your life shall be changed. Those who look down on you will regret it. No, they'll regret it. They will regret it. Already God, come, give me the Bible passage in the book of Hebrews. 13 verse 5. Where God said, I'll be speaking to you. I'll be teaching you what you don't know. Beginning tonight, I'm going to declare, you are going to start what I call one man school. Job chapter 33. Verse. This God will be teaching you what you must know. What distinguishes a man from the next man is what he knows others do not know. God will teach you what he will not teach others. It will be only... <laughs> when I first started 
ministry in Nigeria and began and brought in the part that said, Thou power of God, move. You know, people began to run after me. Everybody wanted that power of God to move around them. And I laughed. They didn't know uh, what else God taught me about that line. Sitting tonight, I remembered you. That's why we're talking about this. We're talking about you. Huh? Whether your people like you or not, you will be the treasury. Every <laughs> time they call for a meeting and you're not there, they'll cancel the meeting and wait for you. Mighty God. Yes, sir. Job 33, 14 through 16. For God speaked once. God speaked once. Yet twice. Yet twice. Yet man perceived it not. Yet man perceived it not. In a dream. But now in a dream. Wait to this dream, your sleep will now become your school. Whatever God will show you in your dreams, when you wake up, you will not forget those things. And that will transport you to a place of honor, promotion, and liberty. When God is your counselor and your advisor, you cannot be an ordinary man. Yes, read on, sir. In the vision of the night, yes. when deep sleep followed upon man, in slumbering upon the bed, why you are struggling upon the bed? Then, then it opened the ears of men. God will open your ears and seal it. Their instructions. And will seal your instructions. Instruction is power. It is God who showing you what to do to reach your appointed place in life. Right where you are, there you are this night. This God will no longer treat you like a small boy. He will respect you. He will honor you. He will confide in you. He will tell you what others do not know. Yes, sir. Let's take verse 4. Where he said, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket. Are you hearing? Blessed shall be your what? Basket and thy store. Blessed shall be what? Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in. Blessed shalt thou be when you drive into your village. And blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. When you drive out, you will, not, you will, you will look like a, a prominent, responsible, blessed man. Not as a, a beggar. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Your enemies shall be, shall be smitten. They shall come out against thee in one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. The Lord shall do what? Command, command the blessing. That word command is very powerful. It is God that will tell all the things you need to go and look for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> How many of you believe the same you shall soon be a big man? My brother called me from Gabon. He said, oh man, I don't know what to have in this your mouth. I will, I will give you one of the cars I bought free of charge. Hey, don't give me any car free. My, our brothers will kill me. He said, okay, give me any amount to have. Do you know what I had that time? 1,300 naira. 
That's a poor man's uh, amount. <laughs> wow. And I said to him, when I give you this, you give me receipt and tear the receipt. Because if our brother see that I'm driving a car you bought for me, that will cause trouble. He said, okay, I agree. So he did that. I gave him 1,300. He gave me the receipt and told the receipts. So don't tell anybody I told you this. Do you hear me? Don't tell anybody they gave me a car I didn't pay for. That's what I'm begging you. And you're looking at me. <laughs> wow. Right where you are this night, today is your day of change. My only worry is the number of people who are limited by their financial problems have only got to only eight people. I had expected much more people. Because this day, you will step out of your struggling and step into an abundant financial blessing. Now that God will run a school for you in your sleep, he will show you what he has not shown others. What we call the power of wisdom shall be a gift to you. Right where you are. I don't know whether you know, even your dresses shall change. No, God will buy new dresses for you. You know we wear all these old dresses again. And your shoes will change. <laughs> the first time I drove, uh, what do you call this car? Eh? Not a, okay. I was going to run a program for Ayo. I called to Abba and needed to urinate. Didn't know where to urinate, except that I remembered one place I bought a car some years ago. I went in there, said, hey, where can I urinate? They asked me, are you my? I said, yes, sir. They said, the last time you came here and bought one Jeep, we sold 14 Jeeps that day. So we'll give you any car of your choice. Choose one. Father, this is a bad temptation. <laughs> men and brethren, men and brethren, I, I, I saw this uh, big jeep. What, what do you call it? Homer. My mother said it looked more like a one word. Homer. I didn't know I had achieved something big. Ayo said to me, don't tell anybody about this back in until you return to Uyo. If nobody arrests you, then you can announce you now have it. <laughs> because it looked bigger than I was that time. Do you know, I'm still driving that car till now. And people tell her, stop and say, oh God, you're a wonderful rich man. Thank you, sir. This God will change the story of your wardrobe and the story of your house. It's amazing that these your brothers that used to look down on you, they will now respect you. What a mighty God. He said he will pour blessings upon you. And it's that blessing will start coming tonight. Yeah, yeah. Are we ready? How many of you are tired of struggling to have money? You will like God to help you prosper. Yes, sir. 
raise that hand well. The Bible said the Lord shall command what? The blessings upon thee in your storehouse and in all that thou settlest thy hands to do. Whatever you lay your hand to do shall prosper and shall be blessed. How many of you like that powerful prophetic declaration that this God will bless whatever you lay your hand to? Can you please speak to your hand and say to your hand, whatever I lay you to do, God shall prosper. The Bible says, to him that believeth, all things are possible. And right away, I want you to believe that your day of change has come. And this new year is your year of change. You are going to enjoy Christmas as never before. And angels will go with you. They will make things easy for you. And that house, your father could not complete. You are going to complete it. Yeah. How many of you believe this is my prophecy? You complete that house. Oluwami modupe. Oluwami modupe. Oluwa mi bodupe modupe bodupe modupe Oluwa mi modupe Oluwa mi modupe Oluwa mi modupe 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 Abasi mi amana Abasimi amana, Abasimi amana, 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 amana. Abbas 
to stand by just five of you I am surprised God gave me only eight people but I'm begging him to increase the number there are eight people here who are struggling in their finances <coughs> Nothing they lay their hand to do seems to prosper. And they don't know the law of financial prosperity. Every man who wants to prosper must write down every money God gives you. Every man that wants to prosper must write down the money he has spent as you walk through life. You must also pay your tithes. Let God know you are accountable to him. You also will uh, allow God to destroy whatever you should destroy your finances and destroy the bag you used to put money. God wants you to come to a new day where all things are passed away and all things are new. He will change your creativity and imagination. 
He will teach you things you must know. And that miracle starts this night. Can you, everybody, take five minutes and tell the Lord, if you are in that class and in that position, that you want him to set you free. Everyone, where are the ushers? Well, Master, give me uh, ushers. Okay. Give me ushers and uh, who? And choristers. I want about 10 of you to stand by. When the power of God will fall upon you, I'm going to ask God to compel you to sleep for only two minutes and wake up. And wake up as a different person. And wake up and your thought life will change. You will begin to think no longer like a small boy, but like a leader. Everyone pray. The, 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 the choristers and the ushers, are they ready? Go put them on their chairs and help them sleep for only two minutes. I want their thought processes to change completely. They shall no longer look down on themselves and say we are nobody. Each one of you shall now become somebody. You are going to become a big thinker. And God is going to help you do what you thought was impossible. This is your night. You have suffered enough. What has a beginning has an end. Father, you promised me eight people shall have their story changed. And the hour has come. Father, what this which is a man from the next man is what he knows you have shown him that you have not shown other people. Everyone who is crying out for the change, let there be a change. Father, Anyone who has suffered enough, let there be a change. Yeah. Father, on my right hand side or my left hand side, let your power arise. And let the yoke be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Thou power of God, in the name of Jesus, move. Somebody help. How many do we have? Somebody help us. A day comes in every man's life that God will allow the past to pass away and allow a new day to start. In the lives of those that the power of God shall touch tonight. Father, may there be a new beginning. May you run a school for them. May you show them what they do not know. May you prepare them for greatness. And that building in their father's compound shall now be completed by them. Father, put surplus money in their hands. And bless them with creativity and imagination. And help them to do what they did not know can be done. Father, on my right hand side, on my left hand side, and in front of me, let your power arise and let the yoke be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. How many do we have? Number six. Remaining six. Two. Yes, sir. Remaining two. Remaining two. Father, there are two. And every force 
opposing those two shall fail. Father, there are two more. And I demand that the yoke of the enemy upon them be broken. Be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken, be broken. That's number eight. That's number nine. Father, every covenant entered into by their parents or grandparents over their future shall now be cancelled. Father, they have cried enough. They have struggled enough. What has the beginning must have an end. And let it end tonight. Let it end tonight. Even those of them who are in bad marriages, Father, let there be healing. Let there be peace. Let there be good communication line. Let them respect one another and love one another. Father, rub Holy Ghost oil upon their hands. Whatever they will lay their hand to do from now shall prosper, 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 shall prosper. Every covenant entered into between them and their parents. This night I cancel it. Father, yeah. make this night a night of new beginning. Yeah. Bless them with wisdom, yeah. with creativity, yeah. with favor, yeah. with imagination, yeah. with resourcefulness. I declare them great men of the family. Yeah. How many do we have? Nine, sir. Nine. Yes, sir. Over our one. Oh, yeah, we were.
beginning tonight, your children's dream shall be different. Father, beginning tonight, where your children dream and wake up, they shall recall their dream. And remember their dream. And remember the instruction. Father, every demon that used to visit them and make them slaves, that demon shall visit them no more. No child of God shall be a slave. They will no more be slaves. Father, beginning tonight, your children's sleep shall be healing sleep. Father, I declare they will owe no man anymore. Whoever they are owing, they will pay. 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 And Father, bless them with good sense of creativity and imagination. No member of our fellowship shall be a slave to any demon. Yeah. And no demon has a right to dictate to them what to do. Yeah. They will hear from God and they will obey him. Yeah. Father, I therefore declare everyone who is part of our fellowship tonight shall prosper financially. Father, when they wake up from sleep, they will recall every dream they dreamt. Yeah. Father, whatever business they will start shall be completed totally and implicitly. Yeah. Father, I declare them blessed. Yeah. Everyone who has heard my voice tonight, I declare you blessed. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Blessed. Yeah. And this night is your night of new beginning. Yeah. And what people thought were impossible shall now become possible. Yeah. Father, thank you. Every sickness that takes away the money of your children, that sickness is banished. Whatever business does not prosper, that business is also cancelled. Let your children be blessed afresh. Let them start afresh. What people said they cannot do, they will do all of them. Father, Father, let my pronouncement over your children be carried out by you. Yeah. Father, tear that their old cupboard and give them new dresses. Yeah. Father, that boy that you used to say to them, there are things you cannot do. That voice should be cancelled down. Because there is nothing they cannot do. I announce that this coming Christmas shall be their best. They wear beautiful dresses they have done one before. And their family shall now be reorganized. They will love one another and care for one another and respect one another and honor one another. Father, the envy of the enemies shall not stop them. Thank you. Mighty God, thank you. Those who used to look down on your children shall look down on them no more. 
Father, hear me. For I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to quickly say to three persons, the Lord has blessed me. Please stay away from quarreling with your wife. Tell her I said so. Madam, don't quarrel with your husband again. Two of you are now changed people. And that marriage is changed. That family is changed. Your children are going to step into a new home. And the miracle has started. If you believe it, say amen three times. And you're waiting to remember. I remember your mommy in Kuwait. And you're waiting to Jehovah. I remember your mommy in Kuwait. I remember your mommy in Kuwait. I remember your mommy in Kuwait. I knew what it meant to Jehovah. I remember your mommy in Kuwait. And you're waiting to remember. Ami mo yo mami kwe Ami mo yo mami kwe Ami mo yo mami kwe I know what in the Jehovah Jesus Ami mo yo mami kwe I know what in Jehovah member Ami mo yo mami kwe I know what in the the mother I Ami mo yo mami kwe I know what in Jehovah member Ami mo yo ma mi kwe Ami mo yo ma mi mo yo ma mi mo yo ma mi mo yo ma mi kwe Ami mo yo ma mi kwe
anybody claims your children are owing. Father, even if a father says the son is owing him, that debt is cancelled. Father, I demand that this night must be a night of new beginning. Yeah. Your children shall learn everything about money, how to use money, how to save money, how to invest money. And they will beg nobody for money anymore. Yeah. Father, they will owe no man anymore. Yeah. Father, they will come to a new place of financial success. Whatever they lay their hand to do shall now prosper. Every vehicle that had been given in trouble will no longer trouble them. Dear Lord, let this night be the night of new beginning. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. If you're a member of our fellowship, I ask you to hear me this night. Don't have sex with anybody you want to marry him or her. It will sow and plant the demon of mistrust and suspicion is a very difficult demon to deal with. Please, wait until you are wedded. If you like, you can make love to her 20 times a day. Nobody will suspend you. But to have sex before wedding is to destroy your true future Destroy your marriage. Destroy your children. Please, don't let it be. Destroy even your financial success. Beginning tonight. Tonight is your night of new day. A new beginning. Yeah, the day comes when God will cancel the chain of poverty. I, I was studying with my wife and she was telling me a pretty woman like me should not be driven in a highly flammable Balekaja bus. And I said to her, God will change that story. Suddenly, a man appeared beside us and asked me, are you a man? And I said, yes, but you, who are you? He said, I am Mihukumere. God has asked me to buy you a new car now. And I have the money. And I'm ready to buy the car for you. I asked him, oh God, are you an arm robber? He said, no. I am a Christian like you. I serve the same God. I have found that... Uh, this God loves you. I want you to drive new cars. So I'll kick it off by giving you one now. My wife said to him, this is my husband, had bad mouth. Too. See how he asked whether you are an arm robber. Forgive him, but buy the car in my name. I'll give you mine. And uh, she gave him, uh, she gave him her, her name. And he paid for the car. On our way home, I just said to God, this is not right. I'll go back and refund the money. I went back and refunded the money. And the man said to me, if I invite you to preach in our church, if we give you offering, will you take? I said, yes. So I went, preached in their church. He gave me offering and gave me back the money I gave him. And since that time till now, we have not stopped having too many jeeps. 
This night is a night of new beginning. Amen. You will not, those who used to mock you, they will mock you no more. Amen. Those who said you are nobody, it's a lie. You are somebody. Amen. This night is a night of new beginning. Amen. Yes. It's a night of new beginning. Father, whoever has this key to his car, you promised us mobility for every one of us. And nobody shall retire without his own car. Father, I demand. Father, I demand that the blessings you used to use to multiply the speed of your children be given to us. Amen. Bless everybody with speed. Amen. With speed. Amen. Let the world know that believers are superior to all believers. Father, thank you for being our God. We shall be faithful to you. We shall love you. And we shall obey you intelligently and obey you intently and obey you earnestly. Father, we promise there shall be peace in our marriage. We shall love one another and love the children. Father, help us not to fail again. We are tired of falling and rising and falling. Father, we shall fall no more. All the old debts are cancelled. This is our day of new beginning. It shall be so. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands and begin to worship the King of Kings. Lift up your hands and begin to say, Thank you, Jesus. Begin to verbalize the things that you want God to do for you. Tell God from today, I am rich. I am not poor. I come out of poverty. I enter into the blessing of Abraham, whom God has blessed in all things. Begin to worship the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank God for our daddy. Thank God for the message. Thank you, Father. Take glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Remember, those in amongst us here that want ordination, Remember, it's going to take place on the second of next month. That is on Monday. So, go to your zone, give your name, one and one elder in each zone and department. Can we just raise our hand and share the grace in fellowship? If you 